And it's rainy and eventually get rid of the snow. Let's get the lights going. All right, I'm ready now. <laughs> I need them lights. Get lit. Get lit. That's right. Get lit. Well, welcome to Holy Covenant, everybody that's here in person and, and everybody that is online. We're glad that you joined us today. Um, let's get to a few announcements that uh, didn't print. <laughs> the beginning. Oh, of yeah. The, yeah. Sorry. Is that that bad printer downstairs? No, that's oh. mine. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if you have a phone, please put it on vibrate. Or if you're in the church, please mark that you're here. You know, check in at our Facebook page and let us know that you uh, you came in. Uh, it's, uh, so let me get to uh, some of these uh, announcements we got. Age Options Large Group Meeting is February 22nd at 11 a.m. via Zoom. There's a link on the newsletter. There's a link uh, at the, on the Age Options website and on our Facebook page. So we'll have a speaker from the Alzheimer's Association to discuss... Memory care, if anybody's interested in that. Ash Wednesday service is March 2nd from 5 to 6 p.m. If you wish only uh, to come here for ashes, we'll be standing outside. Is there, oh, we won't we'll be in? Oh, we'll be inside. <laughs> Last year it was kind of like cold. <laughs> but uh, this year we'll be here. We'll be inside. You can just stop right in and, and just get your ashes and... Um, Leaving. We'll have regular ashes and we'll have uh, glitter ashes. So and from, uh, at seven o'clock is the regular service. And at seven at seven a.m. Yeah. Oh, seven p.m. Yeah, I wouldn't be here at seven a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. Come on. <laughs> and at seven p.m. we will have regular service here. If you want to come in and have uh, and do service with us, do you feel a call to help with worship? to read a prayer or a reading or to usher or serve communion. Whether you're here in person or virtually, you can always tape it and add it in. Uh, we need and want your gifts, so please contact Reverend Martha or Roxanne, and uh, they'll give you all the information. And now let's go into service. I don't need your mask. <laughs> That's my KN95 mask. So, as we gather to join in worship, in person and online, I invite you to join us in our mission statement. Holy Covenant invites you to bring your beliefs and identities to celebrate with us as we strive toward inclusion, spirituality, community action, and social justice, and our call to worship. Like the sun that is far away and yet close at hand to warm us, so God's Spirit is ever present and around us. Come, Creator, into our lives. We live and move and have our very being in you. Open now the windows of our souls. Amen.
Would you pray with me, please? Fountain of life, teach us to be all you want us to be. Give us the grace to hear and speak, to truly listen, and take into our hearts your wisdom so that we can share your love and grace with others. In all your many names, amen. amen. A reading from the wisdom of 1 Kings chapter 17. After the miracle of multiplying the meal and oil of the child of the woman, the owner of the house became ill, and his illness was oh, so overwhelming, there was no breath left in the child. And she said to Elijah, What is between me and thee, man of God? You have come to bring my sin to remembrance and kill my child. Then he to her, Give me your child. And he took her child from her bosom and carried the child up into the room upstairs where he, Elijah, was staying, and laid the child on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Holy One, Holy One, my God, have you actually wrought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her child? And Elijah stretched himself out upon the child three times and cried out to the Most High, Holy One, my God, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the host high listened to the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he was revived. Then Elijah took and brought the child down to the house upstairs room and gave it to the mother and said, Look, your child lives. So the woman said to Elijah, Now this I know, you are a man of God, and that the word of the Holy One of old in your mouth is true. A reading from the wisdom of Luke chapter 7. The day after the healing of the centurion slave, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. He had just approached the gate of the town and suddenly being carried out with a, was a man who had died, his mother's only son, and she was a widow with a, with a large crowd from town. When the, the Messiah saw her, he came, he, he came forward and touched, sorry, when the Messiah saw her, he had compassion upon her and said to her, Do not weep. Then Jesus came forward and touched the coffin, and the bearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother and said, Fear seized all more all of them. And they glorified God, saying, The great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited God's people. This word about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Here in reading greetings. May God add a blessing to the hearing. <laughs> this is our voice actor, Colin. He plays the child. <laughs> so, Colin, were you paying attention when Jim was talking today? Yes. What were the Bible verses about? Uh, people. Oh, very good. You were paying attention today. <laughs> so, in the first reading, I don't think the boy was quite dead, but there wasn't a breath coming from his lips, so very close, if not. And he, the God brought the child back to life for the widow, right? And then in the second reading, the, the man was dead, dead. Oh. But his mother was also a widow, and um, that was her only child. So he took compassion upon her, right? And yeah, okay. <laughs> so the um, the whole point of the, the what do you think the point of those two stories are? Well, how um, how of how we um, how come to get 
give that to her. Mm -hmm. We gave them second chances, right? Yeah. Second chances to do better things. Now, in today's world, it probably wouldn't look quite like that. Like, people wouldn't just rise from the dead. But God does give us second chances, right? Like, He gives us opportunities to do better than what we used to do and, and put on better people, right? So all we have to do is take those opportunities for those check second chances and yeah. make the most of them, right? Yeah. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for all of the teachings that we've learned today, and we ask that you please watch out for us and help us to see when you're giving us the second chances we need in life. Thank you. Amen. Amen. No, this is our other part. Okay, get off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Always brings a fresh perspective to, <laughs> to the scripture readings. All right. I got so caught up in, in, in listening to them, I forgot to get myself ready here. <clears throat> All right. So, my friends, let us pray. Holy One, life of the world. Bless this time. May my words be true and clear. Give us all wisdom and strength to show your love and grace to the world. In all your many names, amen. Amen. So these readings fall in kind of an odd place in the church year. Um, the topic is revival, excuse me, but it's several weeks before Easter, and it's, and it's even two weeks um, before Lent, which begins on Ash Wednesday, um, that season of preparation for Easter, that's, which is a celebration of Christ's resurrection. So before even Lent has begun, we are talking about revival and new life. But I think there's something um, encouraging about these reminders of hope, especially here in the Northern Hemisphere, <clears throat> as we endure the snow and the cold and the wind and everything else we've been dealing with. I don't know about any of you, um, but February is a difficult month for me emotionally. Uh, it's cold and snowy. Um, there are no real holidays this time of year, nothing to really look forward to, like, you know, Christmas or New Year's even. And this year, it was the first time my mom's birthday came around after her death first birthday without her. Uh, and for some reason, this I'm not even going to explore, but several of my relationships ended in February. So it's been a month of sadness and endurance for a long time for me. But in the midst of sleet and snowbanks and sad memories, here come these reminders of God's ability and willingness to revive us. In both of these readings, we could say there are special circumstances leading to the revival. Um, the mother in Sidon, the, the widow of, with Elijah there, um, she'd been sheltering and feeding one of God's prophets, right? So one could consider that she was maybe owed a, a favor or something. Um, the widow in Nain had no one but her son to care for, and and uh, and who the only one who cared for her, right? She was a widow. Remember that in that time and place, a woman who didn't have a man, loosely, uh, you know, uh, used there, but a husband, a son, a brother, uh, a, a, an uncle, a cousin, somebody, some male relative to whom she was connected. She didn't have that. She was marginalized. Uh, women rarely owned property. Uh, she's described as the owner of the house. Yeah, the woman in, um, in uh, Sidon is described as the owner of the house. But that was, that was rare. Um, they worked in all kinds of ways, actually, from artisan work like pottery and making baskets um, to labor in the fields. But, very few of them owned the proceeds of that labor. Uh, today there's a saying that a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. 
Um, meaning that a woman can live today, can live independently um, of a man, any man, if she so chooses. Amen. Amen. That was not at all true in Jesus' day. And in fact, one of the surprising features of Jesus' ministry to his contemporaries was his care and his communication with women and children. So here, Jesus revives the widow's son, as Elijah did. They're both widows, both children of, of widows. And this is good news for the widow. Once again, she'll be cared for, not reduced to begging or selling herself into slavery just to have enough to eat. It's good news for the son, too. Surely he would have wanted to take care of his mother. It was ingrained in the culture just as we care for parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and so on today. Ideally, we don't abandon those who, who gave us life and taught us as we grew. Yes, I know that's making several assumptions about how good people are to each other, but the ideal, yes. Even the child Elijah revived would have the opportunity then to grow up and to care for his mother. And I, the, the thing that also comes out to me in these readings is the terrible grief that a mother must feel at the loss of her child, not just in, econ in an economic sense, but in an emotional sense. I don't have to tell this group um, the pain and the sorrow of losing a child. I watched my mother and my sister go through it. It's not something I can ever, ever imagine um, how deep that pain must be. And I would lift up here in this Black History Month the fact that so many black mothers have lost their sons, their children, their families, to violence. Justice requires that they receive justice too, just as these widows did in the Bible. Revival is a second chance. Those widow sons had another opportunity, not only at life, but at caring for their mothers. This is why I think these readings are very appropriate for this time in the church year. As we prepare for Lent, the time for reflection and contemplation of our spiritual life, it's good to be reminded not only that we can be revived, but that we are revived for something. It's not simply, yay, new life, I can go back to, you know, life as usual now, right? Revival offers the chance for a kind of do-over. Not really a total do-over, because of course life doesn't stop, time doesn't pause, but it's a chance to reframe things, or to start anew. There's a saying in recovery circles that every day is a new start. Maybe we messed it up yesterday, but here's today. And we'll face it not feeling that we cannot win because we messed up yesterday, or that we will inevitably fail because we messed up yesterday, but that today, just for today, we'll do our best. And then we can get up tomorrow and do it again because we did better today. Yeah. What is it? that you would like to revise, or maybe revive, in your life? Is it something in your spiritual life, maybe a, a practice or a habit that you've gotten out of, or one you want to start? Maybe a regular prayer time, or spiritual reading, or a retreat? Perhaps there's something in your personal relationships crying out for a do-over, a reconnection, a reconciliation, or simply time spent together. Or it could be your work, or even simply a hobby 
you want to get back into. Now is the time to plan a garden or read up on the latest in woodworking tools or propose that new project to your boss. Maybe it's your sense of justice, of your desire for peace, and righteousness, racial and social and economic justice. What would help you feel re-energized and excited? Where does your life need revival? And I'm going to leave you with that question because I can't answer it for you, obviously, nor can anyone else. But contemplate it over the next two weeks or so as we approach Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. Prepare yourself for revival. In all God's names, amen. Amen. And now we gather for a community time of, of prayer. If you have prayers that you would like included in the community <laughs> prayers, there is a prayer request book at the back of the sanctuary or you are invited to include them in the chat box if you are with us online. Oh God, you lean into us. We lean into you. A flow of relationship that has no end. We are grateful. We are invited to pray without ceasing. And this is not a burden but a freeing gift, an invitation to stay present to our constant dance with you. As we pray in each moment, our breath is with us always. We breathe your peace as many are holding their breath, watching the tensions on the border between Russia and Ukraine and the diplomatic talks trying to stave off war. May your peace, which surpasses understanding, swoop into the hearts and minds of those with so much power. May we become transparent about why we fight wars and realize that our lifestyle choices are involved. We breathe your comfort on those whose lives were impacted by the devastating mudslide in Petropolis, Brazil. We breathe your comfort for those who grieve for the lost and missing from the Spanish, Spanish fishing trawler that sank off the coast of Newfoundland. We breathe grateful for the gift of life as we pray for those for whom each breath is a struggle. We breathe with the many globally who have COVID-19, including long COVID, we pray for Hong Kong, where cases are spiking and hospitals overflow. We pray for health officials in Austria, Germany, the United States, and other countries as they make decisions to lift mass mandates. May science and common good guide our decisions, not economic and political polls. We pray for peaceful resolution to protests in Canada and France around COVID protocols. We breathe into all of our exhaustion, grief, and the longing to breathe again safely and free. We breathe aware of the oxygen we gain from our living tree kin. We grieve the reported loss of 8 million trees this winter in the United Kingdom due to storms with thousands more threatened. We grieve the loss of record high deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon in January. We confess to our complicity in lifestyle choices that affect the trees we depend upon and love. We breathe in gratitude for policies that expand freedom to be who you created us to be. As lawmakers in New Zealand unanimously voted to ban conversion therapy 
protecting those who are persecuted because of their gender or sexual orientation. And in Kuwait, where they have overturned the law that criminalized cross-dressing. We breathe in awe of the beauty of the earth. You create as those of us, of the earth you create as those of us in the northern hemisphere gaze upon the gentle light of the February snow moon shining over us all. In each breath, when we are aware and unaware, you are aware, leaning toward us, holding us in magnificent love. May each breathing one feel this profound love. Holy God, today we pray especially for people caught up in war and violence. We hold before you all who live close to war and conflict and all who live close to the threat of war and violence. We remember especially at this time people in Ukraine and Russia. We pray for nonviolent and peaceful resolutions of conflict. Give to us all hearts of hospitality and sanctuary. Forgive us all our hostility and hatred. Bring all people to the humanity you give us and to the reconciliation and healing for which you give your life. Strengthen us all to work with you to build justice and peace, reconciliation and healing in our hearts and homes, in our streets, in all communities, neighborhoods, and nations. Bless all who live lives for the peace and well-being of others and make their service fruitful. And as we hold the world in prayer, we carry in our hearts the love of family and friends. And so, loving God, we offer these prayers. For Jim's father, James, as he returns home, and for Jim's uncle, Chuck. For the Glick family, mourning, mourning the death of Paula, wife, mother, friend. And prayers of celebration for my niece and nephew, Rebecca and John, expecting their second child in August. And for Barbara, for Chris and Kimberly to find a place to live. And now, in the silence of our hearts, we lift up others by name or in silence. And now we lift up our voices together. Long ago, a disciple said, Teacher, how should I pray? And Jesus said, Pray like this. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A reminder that our offering basket is in the back now, and as you take communion, you can walk around to the back and drop off um, your offering, or you can do it um, after service. And if you're online, or if you don't even if you don't have an offering to do here, you can also also use PayPal or Square. Um, so let us pray. Loving one, all that we are and all that we have are gifts from your generous spirit. We give a portion of those gifts now in gratitude to strengthen this community of faith and the larger community beyond us. May they multiply and bring blessings to those in need of any kind. Amen. Amen.
as we gather once again around God's table, we remember that this is not my table. It's not Holy Covenant's table. It's not even MCC's table. It's God's table. And so all who are here are welcome to share in God's gifts. And we invite those of you who are joining us online to make sure you have that cookie or cracker and something to drink so that you may share in this communion time with us. We thank and praise you, O God, for you are not distant and uninvolved in our lives and our world, but you have come to us humbly and gently, challengingly and irresistibly. And whoever receives your message of love and hope becomes a child of God, born of the Spirit. So we remember Jesus' birth and life, his suffering and victory. On the night before he gave himself up to the powers that feared his message of love and reconciliation, Jesus shared his last meal with his friends. He took the bread and he blessed it, and then breaking it, he offered it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Eat this in memory of me. After the meal, he took the cup of wine and blessed it too, and then he offered it to them, saying, This is my love, poured out for you. Drink this in memory of me. And so, my friends, we eat and we drink and we remember with, with hope, hope and joy in the new life which comes in God's realm. Amen. God of grace, come to us again in this meal, and as we share this bread and wine, may we share in Christ's feast. May we offer ourselves to you again, and may we become one with Christ and with each other, a single unified body. Amen. Amen. Now we will be receiving communion. You may take either of them, take the elements, and we ask that after communion, you would uh, take there after uh, the service, you would be sure to throw the cup in the uh, wastebasket. They are disposable cups. If you would like prayer after communion, Joni will be in the back and we'll pray with you. Come, all things are ready. <laughs>
thanksgiving. We thank you, loving God, for breaking into our world, our lives, and our experience. We thank you, O Christ, for this meal of remembering and the stories of love and grace that it tells. We thank you, O Spirit, for your presence and your challenge for us to become agents of God's compassion. In all God's names, amen. little part that you bought it. So now, my friends, as we return to our daily lives, we take with us the grace of this community, the love of God, the companionship of Christ, and the wisdom of spirit to enable us to heal ourselves, to strengthen and encourage others, and to show the world God's love in all God's names. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.